My last name is phonetic too, but people like to mix Try it up. To make it, mix it co more complex, like person. Jazz it up, person. Or, because why would anyone's last name be person? I, I, <laughs> it wouldn't be. There was like Smith was a Smith, Miller was a Miller. Your ancestors were people. People, sure. <laughs> Great. Hey, Firebase developers. Welcome back to another episode of Ask Firebase, the show where we answer all of your burning Firebase questions. I'm your host, Jen Person, and today I am joined by Gus Horwith. Now, Gus, tell me a little bit about what you do here. Uh, I am on the marketing team here marketing. at Firebase. Uh, so that means that I take care of things like case studies, which are stories about developers and the awesome ways that they use Firebase. Sweet, which um, definitely is why when I had this question come up the other day, I immediately thought about you because I think this is something that developers think a lot, and that's why I was really happy to have you on help me uh, answer this question. Now, also, I'd just like to say as an aside, it seems like Firebase would just sell itself, but you know, we really got to get the message out there, right? It's, it's true. Like... Uh, you would think that you know, if you heard about Firebase, why wouldn't you use it? But you got to. Uh, but you have to have heard yeah, about it. That's problem it. number one. And problem number two is, you know, sometimes people have one idea of what Firebase does, and we have to help them understand that it does more than that or different things. Uh, and so, you know, it's sometimes it's about education. You know, I like to think that that uh, my main job as a marketer is just to get the word out and make sure that people know what the product does and that then, like you said, it'll sell itself at the end of the day. Right, which is why when I had a question online the other day where a developer said, you know, Firebase is great for when I just want to get a quick example of an app up off the ground, but when is it gonna be big enough for, let's say, a real app that we're gonna wanna put in, say, the App Store or the Play Store? When is it gonna be something that could be more enterprise. And uh, I definitely told them, well, good news, it already is. But that is. that's the good news. Yeah, I think that's a pretty common question we get is people, you know, are like, oh, Firebase is great for prototyping and, you know, launching an app, but then which like, it is. which it is, it's true. Um, but it also works really well for apps at, you know, scale. Like we like to sort of in, say it's from your first user to your millionth user and beyond, right? Um, so yeah, we've got some uh, really cool stories about large apps using Firebase. Should I tell you about one of them? Why, yes. <laughs> That's great. Uh, so one of the uh, cooler stories that we had came up last year. Um, you may have heard the story if you were at I.O., which oh, I believe right. you were. Uh, and that's a company called Wattpad. Uh, they made a, and their original app was called Wattpad, and then they made another app called Tap. And Tap is a storytelling app, but it's like storytelling for the modern age. And so it's all done through tapping and kind of text exchanges that tell these cool stories that unfold. So Wattpad wanted to launch this new type of app, uh, and they used Firebase to build the whole thing, start to finish, launch it, uh, and they reached a uh, large scale. Uh, I don't exactly know how many users. We should probably figure that out uh, quite quickly. Uh, yeah. Oh, so we're going to figure it out, and then it's going to appear somewhere in this area. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Magic. Perfect. They did, in fact, use it for uh, their original build and launch. And But you know, they already had a fairly large user base from their first app, Wattpad. And, and so they knew that they needed to build for scale. Uh, and uh, they, that's what they did. And, and Tap has grown very quickly, been very well received. And they used Firebase for everything from their back end to their analytics to um, you know a lot of their sort of growth experiments using remote config. Sweet. And yeah, I actually have it on my phone right here. Oh, um, what a coincidence. Wow, how interesting. Yeah, so, you know, I, w I, I had to really download it to figure out what it is that it does. And it is, it's really interesting. It's kind of like, I, I don't know, maybe I'm speaking for other people now, but if you ever had like a conversation where you like take a screenshot of it, cause you're like, this really tells me a lot. Um, especially like when I'm having fun conversations with my mom, I'll like take a screenshot cause it, it just makes me laugh. It makes me, reminds me of my mom and, and the funny things she says, but this lets you sort of take a snapshot like that and turn it into like a, a complete story. Yeah, and it's it's a good point. It's all user-generated content, right? And so uh, you can write your own story that then anybody else can sort of read, upvote, it surfaces great stories. And so another important feature that they wanted was to make sure they had real-time counting of all of the like voting and how many, I think they call them taps that a story had gotten. And you know, obviously all of that was very easy with the real-time database. You wanna talk about Doodle? Sure, yeah. So Doodle is uh, an app that helps you find the best date and time to meet people. And so all you have to do is set up a poll uh, with a few times. You send your poll to your friends and they can click what times work for them. Uh, and so Doodle wanted to redesign their uh, onboarding flow. 
Um, but first they decided that they needed to stabilize the app. They need mm -hmm. to get rid of all crashes because even with the best onboarding flow in the world, uh, it doesn't matter if your app is buggy, right? So they used Crashlytics, uh, which was brand new to Firebase uh, at the time. We got that when Fabric joined our team. That's correct, yeah. right. So Fabric joined our team just about a year ago. Crashlytics helps you um, find bugs in your app and do uh, traces and, and understand very quickly and easily what's going wrong and what's buggy. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Doodle set this really ambitious goal to be 100% uh, crash-free user rate, meaning that 100% of their users did not experience a crash. Crashlytics uh, helps you pinpoint where the crashes are occurring, and it also aggregates them so you can see common crashes and which ones are affecting the most number of people. So they could really get it much closer to zero because they're not just uh, picking random things that are happening, they're focusing on the bulk of where they're finding their problems. So after they debugged their app and got it you know, super stable, um, they decided to test a few different onboarding flows using remote config. So remote config is, as you know, a product that lets you sort of A-B test or A-B-C test your app um, without needing to push new versions to the App Store or the Play Store. Um, and so they, uh, they ran a variant test on a couple different onboarding flows. And uh, ultimately, they were able to get 15% more daily active users uh, by implementing this new onboarding flow, which they proceeded to roll out to their entire user base. And, and so for them, their most important user engagement metric that they track uh, beyond just active users is the number of polls created in the app. Uh, and so when it came to that engagement metric, they got 43% more polls, um, which you know is a pretty substantial change okay, for a yeah. large app like Doodle. Um, and so you know for them, it was not about building and launching something new. They already had this large production scale app out there, and so they used some of uh, of you know our sort of app quality and growth products in order to stabilize and you know, then grow and, and kind of impact some of those metrics that large scale apps care about. Yeah, actually, it's funny because as I was uh, using the app and I saw the onboarding flow, I found myself wondering, uh, what if there are still multiple versions? Like which yeah. one am I looking at? So uh, we have a couple different polls going on right now. Uh, one is uh, we're gonna pick the best time to go for coffee. And um, yes, it was really easy to put busy. together. <laughs> yes, indeed. And um, then, I thought of making one for where to go for lunch uh, because every day I'm finding that uh, it's like a huge debate between uh, my friends and I about where we're gonna go. Now we can just make a one survey a day, boom, majority rules, Done. Uh, it's much easier. Great, and it was cool, easy to use, and I do think the onboarding flow helped, so I guess it worked. Yeah. Great, um, I think we have one more example of an app that uses Firebase that we're gonna check out. The game is called Dan the Man, and it comes from a studio called Half Brick. Uh, Half Brick made the game Fruit Ninja, uh, as well as Jetpack Joyride and several other titles. Uh, Fruit so Ninja. So they're doing all right. Yeah, they're doing pretty well. Um, and so uh, they decided to use Firebase in Dan the Man. And so they decided to test one of our newer products, which launched at the Dev Summit in Amsterdam in October. Uh, and th that product is Firebase Predictions. Mm -hmm. So, um, quick recap. Predictions uses uh, machine learning applied to your analytics in order to surface intelligent audience segments based on predicted user behavior. So what I mean by that in uh, sort of simple terms is, you know, we tell you, Firebase tells you who in your app is going to churn, who in your app is not going to churn, who might spend, who won't spend. Those are all out of the box predictions. Or you can take conversion events that you've put into your analytics uh, and create predictions based on who is going to or not to complete that conversion event. So basically based on uh, if you can predict someone's going to spend, you can try to change the experience that they're having so that you give them that option. And those who might leave, you can give them some sort of incentives to stick around. Which is exactly what Half Brick did. Uh, and so they ran a, a variant test uh, in their app. So they took three groups, a control group, group one, and group two. And for control group, there was no promotion. For group one, they took their existing heuristic for users who were slightly more engaged, which was completion of level three. Okay. And so for anybody who completed level three, so upon completion of level three, anybody in this group one got this promotion. And then for the, the group two, they used predictions. And so anybody who was predicted to churn received this exact same promotion. So once they ran this experiment, they found that in group two, the predictions bucket, uh, they had 20% higher seven-day active users. And 
So after seeing the success from the experiment, they took this predictions and they applied it to their entire user base. And so now they have predictions running on an ongoing basis and anyone who comes into this predicted audience segment of Firebase suspects this user will churn receives a uh, in-game promotion of the same kind. And they used remote config to serve that in-game promotion. And so it was very easy to take this audience segment from predictions, which is dynamically being generated, right. and take a different product, remote config, and affect the user experience based on what bucket they fell into. So it's a great example of how uh, different Firebase features can work really nicely together. Um, and it, it seems like it was very effective for them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I think that's you know sort of the, uh, the goal of Firebase is to not just help with one part of building your app, but to provide a whole bunch of different products that work really well together so that you, know, you can continue to kind of leverage all of these efficiencies that you get from using multiple products within the platform. Beautiful. Well, so now I'm hoping um, in the future when I'm seeing those questions that I see from you know Twitter or Stack Overflow, where uh, developers are wondering, is Firebase going to work for me when I have you know a million users? I can be like, absolutely, and absolutely. Let, me, let me show you some uh, great examples. Now, is there somewhere that people can check out uh, if they want to find out more about um, these cases or any other cases that we have? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can head right over to our YouTube channel to see the Doodle case study. We turned that into a video where Ooh. we talked to the team. I'll link that, too. Perfect. Uh, if you want to read more about the Dan the Man case study, you can head over to the website mm -hmm. on the Firebase predictions page. Okay. Um, right down at the bottom like of the page, too. you'll see a case study about Dan the Man. Uh, and the tap case study we also turned into a video, which you can link to that. Sweet. And wouldn't it be cool if someone watched this and then one day we were talking about the case study that was their app? We would love to hear more about your case studies. In yeah. fact, you can tweet with hashtag built with Firebase and tell us about how you used Firebase to build an awesome app of your own. Yeah, actually, that's one of my favorite things is when developers are telling me they're using I'm like, show me what you're building. I really want to know. Absolutely. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on and talking about some uh, great cases that are using Firebase, some awesome apps. Now, if you have questions for Firebase, uh, make sure you put them on your favorite social media and on Stack Overflow and tag them with the hashtag Ask Firebase. And who knows, you may see it on a future episode of Ask Firebase. And of course, if you're building something, I really want to see it. And you can tag that with the hashtag built with Firebase. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on a future episode. Bye. Bye.